Hey guys, it's Chi Chi and today's video is going to be another installment of the Pharmacy School series here on my channel. So thank you guys again for tuning in. I appreciate all the views and all the comments um, and everything else that you guys have um, given to me since I've been doing these series. Um, this video today is going to be all about the PCAT. If you guys don't know what the PCAT is, it is the pharmacy college um, examination that you have to take to apply into a pharmacy school. Now, this video only applies to those who are doing pre-pharmacy um, like the prerequisites and they're currently doing it at a school which does not have the pharmacy school program so the thing about that is if you were in a school um, that does not offer the actual pharmacy school that means that you have to do all the prerequisites first before transferring into the program and into the doctoral program which is the PharmD um, curriculum which is a terminal degree so yeah if you guys need to know any if you want to know any more information about like um, prerequisites or um, how to complete your application and all that type of stuff I have a playlist down below um, and if you guys have any other questions you guys already know you can always leave me a comment I most likely will reply so yeah so this video is going to be all about the um, the PCAT exam um, I'm actually missing something now okay hold on let me get my thing Okay, sorry about that. So basically, um, this video is going to be all about the PCAT exam. And again, uh, apologize. The PCAT exam stands, stands for Pharmacy College Admission Test. And that's usually the test that you take before you get into pharmacy school. So I know I have a lot of people who are thinking about going into pharmacy. And they want to know like what you have to do to take the exam. How did I prepare to take the exam? And you know how um, successful was I? So... Um, I just want to lay out what the PCAT exam has. <clears throat> so there is one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six sections on the PCAT exam. Um, there's the writing section, which is 30 minutes. The verbal section, which is 25 minutes. The biology section, which is 35 minutes. The chemistry section, which is 35 minutes. Um, and then you have a rest. And then there's a reading comprehension, which is 50 minutes and the quantitative ability which is 45 minutes now you think in your mind this is starting to sound a little bit long um, the exam roughly can take you about three to four hours depending on how fast um, and how prepared you are for the exam or how um, you know you're type to check back and see if you know you got things right or whatever so it just all depends on you so now for the writing section, um, what I'm going to do is first going to tell you guys about the materials I used to prepare for the exam. So I'm going to go ahead and look. Um, I know the biggest thing that was so helpful to me was the Dr. Collins. Dr. Collins is like highly rated. Um, before I took the exam, what I did was I went to um, studentdoctornetwork.com and I looked up things that people use to study for their pharmacy college, I'm um, sorry, the PCAT exam. And that was like the number one thing that people spoke of. So my friend actually um, paid the money to take the classes or whatever, and she had the booklet. So what we would do was I studied on my own, and then together we'll come together and we'll kind of like, you know, test each other, quiz each other. Um, from the way that we studied in groups, it seemed like the the Dr. Collins material was like very similar to the styling of the questions that they had on the exam. This is not to say, and I need to repeat, I need to say this first. This is not, this is a disclaimer. I'm not paid to do this video. I'm not um, endorsed by any of these materials that I'm talking about. This is just my own personal testimony on how I, um, you know, dealt with preparing, taking the exam and everything else like that. So yeah, the Dr. Collins material was like the one that I felt that was was the most similar um, to the PCAT question style. I also um, did the piercing, I think it's called the Pearson View website. I signed up and I paid the money to have the, I think it was a chemistry portion and the biology portion and chemistry, biology, and it was another one. Oh, and the reading. So you have options. They have multiple different tests um, that you can take. And all you have to do is just pay a fee and then you have that um, test where you can take the questions mm -hmm. and it kind of quiz and then kind of quiz yourself on the material. Or what you can do is you can actually take the test, time yourself, and then send it in. 
So, I'm going to go through the Pearson View first. Now, what I found most helpful for me was in the beginning, the biology and stuff like that, I felt like it was more of memorization. So, I focused heavily when I studied. When I mean heavily on the chemistry portion now I'm not saying that the chemistry portion was hard but my own um, you know it, it you know I just felt like that was like the area that was like kind of like the weakest a little bit for me so I focused heavily on that and you guys know there's like so many different sections on there so <clears throat> the first book I want to talk about is actually called the PCAT flashcards and these are perfect for on the go this book looks just like this um, and if I have the links, I'll post them down below. This book is perfect because it goes through almost all of the sections that you will find on the PCAT exam. And okay, and actually, these are all the ones that has it has like um, the analogies for the verbal part, for the quantitative parts. It has word problems. I mean, these are just set up like little mini flashcards with the answers on the front and on the back. Um, the next helpful item I had was a book called Mastering the PCAT. It says score high on the pharmacy college admission test. This book has three full lengths um, practice tests with details, answers, and explanation. And it has like an in-depth review. Now all the books that I purchased, I think they were all from Amazon. And what I did was I actually went online and I just purchased all the books that had the highest ratings. And that I felt like people did the best from using them. And this book, as you guys can see, is fairly thick. I barely touched this book, but I did use this book every now and again to kind of like touch up on like details and things like that. Um, the book that I can tell you I used the most was this one. As you guys can see, this is the K-Plan um, PCAT Strategies Practice and Review. It has two practice tests and it has the online portion and the book version so basically um, you can schedule as many tests as you want um, you know depending on the calendar um, that they have available and you take the exam the only thing I didn't like about this exam is that they didn't have a writing portion and I really felt like I probably could have benefited by having that but they did have like the quantitative the biology the reading comprehension and the um, the verbal part so all the parts are in there except for the um, the writing part but the thing is they do time it they have like a chat room where you guys can you know go in at first if you have any questions and then they begin the test so this was really really helpful I really like this book another book that I had based on reviews from online was the Pearson no I'm sorry it's the Princeton review sorry my thing is going off in the back hold on Okay, so um, this book is a Prince, um, Princeton review. This book is the PCAT also a review book. It has two full length practice tests, and also it has um, two full length tests that are only um, online. And it has extensive reviews on the chemistry, biology, and quantitative subjects. Now, what I want to say is this book. I barely touched it. The reason why is because I just gravitated to, towards the K-Plan book. But when I reviewed it, like, every once in a while, I really noticed that this book was fairly, 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 fairly detailed. And, um, you know, it's just kind of like the K-Plan book. I felt like the K-Plan book and this book was the most detailed out of all the books that I had. Um... So I tend to gravitate towards the Pearson view, um, practice tests online. Um, when I did study groups with my friends, we did like the Dr. Collins um, practice stuff and the materials together. And then also um, the, the online exams from K-Plan. Now, I'm going to tell you guys some tips and some tricks that I felt like really helped me a lot when I took my own exam. So the thing that I felt like was the most crucial part of this exam was the timing now the timing is so critical let me tell you why okay so you have 30 minutes when you take the um the writing sample you got to be able to think quick on your feet like this exam you cannot it's not like the SAT where you can leave blank questions. If you leave a question wrong, I mean if you leave a question blank on the exam, it is automatically wrong. So it's better for you to get your timing down quick. I mean, really, really quick because they have, okay, so for instance, like the chemistry portion, when I took the exam, which was this past November, November 2014, like um, this is just based off of that version. They had 48 items and you had to complete it in 35 minutes. Yes. 
48 questions in 35 minutes. Now, I'm going to say... Um, the thing that's like really helpful is if you take practice exams. The only reason why I'm saying that is because when you take practice exams and you really time yourself, like just take these, if you take the quizzes and exams so much, like your timing will improve, your timing will improve. And you would be so surprised. Like from the beginning when I started studying, I felt like I always ran out of time and I always stopped at like question like 30 and I had like four, um, maybe like 18 or so questions left. So I really timed myself every time I went to go study for the material. Timing is the essence for this exam. I'm not going to repeat it because it's true. If you are the type that you know that you're not good at reading, I would kind of brush up on that and, you know, just kind of figure out ways to improve how you can critically read or, you know, stuff like that, looking at, you know, just looking at challenging books or something like that just to help improve. Um, another thing that was helpful was the, the study groups that my friends and I did. We constantly were quizzing each other, we'll call each other, text each other on the phone and, you know, try to see how quick we can think on our feet. Like that, that was really, really helpful. And let me see another thing. Oh, the day before you go to the exam. Oh, sorry. The day I prepared, it took me about, I prepared for the exam for about like a month and a half mind you i prepared for this exam while i was still in school so it was not only that i had to worry about it's also about my classes i can't just get in and then be failing my classes so it's kind of like you have to be having good time management skills um to kind of balance the um the two together um also um leading up into the week of the exam i would just focus on just retaking tests over and over and over just so you can get your time down and not only get your time down but make sure you get your time so it's so quick and you also get the right answer because one mistake can just make the answer wrong um and also like the day the probably like the week leading up to exam i would not suggest going out to eat to eat stuff you don't um that you regularly don't eat um i would try to keep your mind in a set pace where you're going to bed a little bit early because like me i was pulling all-nighters and it was so hard to get out of that like leading up to the exam so i had to cut myself off to go to bed around like 9 or 9 30 every day just so my mind can be you know my body can be adjusted to like the time that i was changing leading up to to the exam and also make sure the day before the exam you get plenty of rest if you are the type that you know you have anxiety about tests I would first tell you to pray on it and just leave it to God and also I would just highly suggest that um, you get a lot of rest before the exam because this exam is so long like I couldn't believe like I was in there for that long and you just want to make sure that your stamina is up. That's why I keep saying take tests over and over and over again. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are some of the tips and stuff that helped me with my PCAT exam. And if you guys have any other questions, just let me know. Um, I have my email down below. And I also link my playlist to all my other pharmacy school series that can answer some other questions. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh yeah, and good luck if you're studying for your PCAT exam. I wish you the best, and I know God is going to be always there for you. Mwah.